You told us earlier this year that the big tech firms should be facing more regulation. We saw them over in Washington yesterday. Do you think that there's a pathway now for regulators to crack down on big tech in a bigger way? There is a pathway, and it's a hard problem. And there are many reflex solutions. There's a lot of discussion about Section 230 of the CDA, uh, about antitrust. That's all super important. I think it's really important to look at regulation that has already happened, what did work and what didn't work, and look at that as a possible pattern for big tech regulation. I mean, you speak with such expertise, of course, Martis, because you weren't just chief information officer and chief financial officer at Goldman, but you also were setting up your own software companies, those related to commodities. And I'm interested, therefore, in what more you think will be done realistically with big technology when we've got such sort of non-bipartisanship over on Capitol Hill at the moment. Well, so I think there's a lot that can be done, and I think there's a lot that must be done. And I, again, I'm looking at analogies from finance. I'm a computer scientist, but I spent most of my career in financial services, and a big part of it working with regulators to, uh, to shape the regulation. And then especially, it was my job with many of my colleagues to implement it. And so there's many patterns in the banking regulation. For instance, as to name one, um, the banking regulators introduced an obligation, an affirmative obligation, that this transaction is suitable for the customer and the bank has disclosed everything the customer needs to know to make an informed decision. You could very well take that pattern and apply it to, for instance, big tech and social media. Does the customer know exactly what big tech is doing with the customer's behavior and the customer's data, how it's being monetized, how the, the platform is choosing which content to show the customer and influencing the customer's actions? And you could just go from there uh, to consider, for instance, the stress tests. I would say that the stress test, the CCAR and DFAS stress test introduced by the Dodd-Frank statute in 2010, but really implemented and expanded by the Federal Reserve, were principal reason that banks continued making markets and lending during this unprecedented crisis. And I would look to that model of requiring the banks to use their models, to use their scenario analysis, to use their understanding of how they make money and how they lose money to figure out how much capital and liquidity they need to hold. It would be hard, but certainly big tech has the resources and the knowledge and, of course, the compute power to do the same thing. So when they are mm. making choices, for instance, to algorithmically amplify some content and get it out there, that is going to maximize emotional resonance, time on site, advertising revenues. But it has consequences. It could, for instance, pollute the infosphere, and it could have grave consequences. Of course, there's a whole chain of causality there. But there's consequences, and we found ways to tax companies for polluting rivers. We can find ways to tax companies for polluting the infosphere yeah. by asking them to use their models.